Hello guys, this is me Dr. Kashan Kasi today here. We were discussing about the ECGs in previous lecture. We have discussed the ECGs of myocardial infarction. Today we are going to discuss another topic which is the cardiac axis determination. So before going to discuss this cardiac axis determination, we will see here some of the basics of electrical activity of the heart, how it is generated and traveled throughout the heart. So basically the electrical activity is generated in the heart from this AC node and it travels towards the AV node and from that AV node it is traveling to the bundle of his and from that bundle of his two branches that is right bundle branch and left bundle branch are originating so the electrical activity is traveling towards the right and left bundle branch so overall this electrical activity is traveling from right side of the heart towards the left side of the heart so from right side which is right atrium the electrical impulse is traveling and it is traveling throughout and towards the left ventricle which is the left side of the heart so this is how the electrical activity is generated and traveled throughout the heart so this electrical activity is collected by means of electrodes or the leads we call lead 1 lead 2 and lead 3 and AVR, AVL and AVF. These are the six leads. We have discussed in detail the leads of the ECGs. But these six leads are here important because these are collecting the data for this cardiac axis. So basically these leads, lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3 are collecting the potential difference between the limbs, left limb, right limb and the left leg. So these limb leads L1 is collecting the potential difference between left arm and the right arm this is lead one likewise lead two and lead three are collecting the potential difference between left arm and the left leg right arm and the left leg this is how this triangle is formed and this is the diagrammatic representation of the electrical impulse collected uh, from the lead one lead two and lead three likewise uh, there is another uh, lead we call AVR. These leads are called augmented leads. AVR, AVL, and AVF. These three leads are augmented leads, and these are collecting potential difference or data from. This is AVR. This AVR is actually augmenting the potential difference. So this AVR is showing the right arm potential. This is a positive potential of AVR. This is left arm potential which is showing the positive potential of AVL and this is AVF which is showing inferior part or inferior surface of the heart and this is also positive. So combine these two diagrams. This is the triangle which is collecting data from these three leads, lead one, two and three and these three leads AVR, AVL and AVF are forming this diagram. This diagram is formed when we complete this AVL by showing the dotted lines. These dotted lines are showing the negative data of AVL. This is showing dotted lines are showing the negative uh, potential of AVR and this is of AVF. So combining both these potentials are showing us the hexagonal diagram. This is the diagram which is hexagonal diagram and this is showing the whole cardiac axis and this cardiac axis is actually the depolarization and this depolarization is collected by the help of these leads so this depolarization is the major depolarization which is due to the qrs complex uh, depolarization or we call the contraction of the heart which is shown in the form of qrs complex this is the qrs complex showing the major ventricular wall depolarization of the heart so in determining the axis first we know the normal axis the normal axis lies between minus 30 to minus 90 or plus 90 normal axis lies between minus 30 to positive 90 degree so this is here axial diagram showing minus 30 degree to positive 90 degree this is showing the normal axis of the heart suppose this is the heart this right atrium this is left atrium right, uh, right ventricle left ventricle this is the heart and it is placed normally here 
this is the normal location and this is the normal axis of the heart which is between minus 30 and plus 90 so this is the normal axis of the heart so whenever there is a deviation from the axis we call it right axis deviation or left axis deviation so whenever the heart is moving away from this uh, normal axis or towards the right side we call it right axis deviation and the normal value for this right axis deviation lies between plus 90 and 180 degree likewise whenever the heart is rotating away from the axis normal axis which is minus 30 degree it is moving towards the left like this away from this we call it left axis deviation so the left axis deviation lies between minus 30 and minus 90 so until now we have discussed the normal axis right axis deviation and the left axis deviation there is another deviation which is lying between minus 90 to 180 degree this is the extreme deviation of the heart so these are all the deviations are shown in the form of hexagonal diagram here this is the determination of the axis with the help of hexagonal diagram we have another method which is uh, usually seen in the form of ecg when we look at the ecg how can we know the exact deviation of the axis so by looking at ecg we can also get uh, the deviation so this is the hexagonal diagram system to get the axis deviation concept so until now we have discussed the normal axis which lies between minus 30 and plus 90 left axis deviation which lies between minus 30 to plus 90 right axis deviation which is lying between plus 90 to 180 degree so there are causes for this left axis deviation and right axis deviation left axis deviation is uh, usually due to left ventricular hypertrophy there can be uh, left bundle branch block wpw syndrome or there can also be other causes for this left axis deviation likewise for the right axis deviation the causes are right ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular infarct all these are the causes dextrocardia wpw syndrome is also involved here so these are all the causes for right axis deviation there are other causes for these we will discuss in uh, some other video but now until now we have discussed the hexagonal diagram system for determination of the axis which is the right axis either it is right axis deviation left axis deviation or the normal axis of the heart so there is another method for determining the axis deviation which is left axis or either the right axis deviation by looking at ecg so now we are going to discuss how we will get the axis deviation from the ecg so before going to discuss the axis deviation from the ecg i will tell you here some of the points regarding these leads lead one lead two and lead three avr avl and avf all these are collecting the electrical signals for the axis determination now for the axis determination from the ecg we will look at the main leads which are lead one lead two and avf so these three leads are very important for collection of data for the determination of axis from the ecg so whenever you will look at the ecg you will look at lead one and lead two so first look at these lead lead one and lead two whenever the lead one is showing positive deflection and lead 2 is also showing the positive deflection positive deflection here means the qrs complex is positive the qrs complex is actually the major complex of the ecg so whenever this is positive in both leads 1 and lead 2 you will say the axis is normal which is lying between minus 30 and plus 90 so when it is positive in lead 1 and negative in lead 2 which means the QRS complex is positive in one lead and it is negative in the other lead. So this is showing the left axis deviation. Likewise, when the lead 1 is showing the negative deviation and lead 2 is showing the positive deflection, this is showing the right axis deviation. So this is how you will get the axis deviation by looking at the ECG. Now, if you want to get the axis deviation by looking at the lead 1 and ABF, you will get the clear picture by the same way looking at lead 1 and ABF. 
now look at lead 1 and avf whenever you will look at the ecg and the lead 1 and lead avf is showing the positive reflection means both the qrs complexes in lead 1 and avf are positive which means the axis is normal if the lead 1 and avf is showing positive and negative deflection which means the axis is left axis deviation there is another possibility that if the lead one is showing negative deflection which means the qrs complex is negative and the avf is showing positive deflection which means the qrs complex is positive this is showing the right axis deviation likewise if the lead one and avf both are negative means the qrs complex in both is negative so in this case there will be a deviation we call the extreme deviation of the axis so these are all the points you should know before going to say that the axis is either right axis or left axis or extreme axis so this was all about today hope you like my video thank you very much for watching i'll see you in my next video